When I was a freshman at Archbishop Williams, my homeroom teacher was Sister Mary Josephine. Yes, she did fit a lot of the stereotypes. She could be waspish. She played favorites. Sister had a huge resentment against the Reformation, but I don't remember her mentioning the Inquisition. She told us terrifying stories about tortured martyrs and occasionally indulged in the pedantic pleasure of a good, satisfying, sweeping generalization. She once told us that if a girl would smoke, she'd drink. And if she'd drink, she'd do anything. I looked around the room, and a lot of Catholic boys were writing that down. <laughs> I didn't because I knew intuitively that I'd never forget it, and I seemed to have been right. I've often wondered since how she could have not known how helpful that information, if true, could be to boys who were just beginning to be damn curious about these temptations of the flesh we kept hearing. The sister also had a great sense of humor and a playful side. She had entered the convent as a teenager, and it may be that some teenage parts of her came down to us miraculously unaltered, like a Precambrian butterfly preserved in amber. She told us one story about a nun friend of hers who had visited the Trappist Monastery in Kentucky, where Thomas Merton was in residence under the vow of silence. The nun saw one of the months passing in his cassock through the parking lot stopped to admire a big, shiny, late model Cadillac. He stuck out his hand and ran his fingertips along the hood, luxuriating in the unnatural smoothness. The nun reported the vision back to her sisters, and they all agreed that the monk had to have been Merton, who, before his conversion, had admittedly given himself over to unspecified forms of worldliness, some of them probably better left unspoken, but others perhaps more innocent, like an intimate appreciation of the heady temptations of conspicuous consumption. Now, having told this story, I see that I might have misled you in my title, that it might not be a story about Thomas Merton at all. But it's certainly about Sister Mary Josephine and her friends, and perhaps also about the fascination that young girls have with rock stars, and what that fascination might look like trapped in amber. I ask you to forgive the bait and switch, and I firmly resolve to continue to confess my sins as quickly as I recognize them. And by the way, what Sister told us about girls who smoke turned out to be misleading, too. Although even today, whenever I see a woman lighting up, I still feel a stupid stab of totally inappropriate hope. <laughs> <laughs>